Well, guys, here we go with that garden harvest in typical Steph and Chris fashion. We are behind, and I don't know if you can see it behind me, but we got a frost last night. Now, if you were on Hickory Croft, you saw four days ago, we did a video talking about the fact that the frost was coming and we had the best of intentions, but life just gets in the way between craft sale season and so many other things going on. We did manage to get a few things out of the garden quick when we saw that it was going to frost last night. Um, it was kind of unexpected because they said it wasn't going to, but anyways, that's weathermen. But let's go take a look at the gardens and see just how hard this frost hit and what we're just gonna have to give a miss this year. The lemon trees were something we were quite concerned about because we did not get them into the grow room in the house before this frost came, but it looks like the back here did not see the frost. Just showing you here, this is on the car. Definitely frost. Oh, the basil looks like it's going to end up turning all brown. But the basil's done amazing this year, and that's why I'm not too worried about this, because I have a lot dehydrated. The peppers were something that I was definitely concerned about. You'll see in a moment, we did pick a whole bunch out of the new for 22 garden, but this is our raised beds, and there's a lot of nice red ones here. And I thought, uh oh, but... You can see some of the, the younger ones there, they're getting that black of getting too cold, but all in all, they look pretty safe. The sweet potatoes, not so much. And this is bad. So we're gonna have to make sure we get these out today. The nice thing is you don't want down right in at the, the core here. That's the part that you really don't want to, the frost to hit into the uh, sweet potato itself. And so far, because these had so much greenery, it's just the greenery that's really taken a beating. But look at this. They are done. So they're coming out today. But before we do any of that, we have to do chores. You can hear in the background chickens, ponies, sheep. Everybody wants to be fed. So we need to get that sorted out. And look what we have already in the tub. And Chris is still pulling them out of here. Look at this one. Can we get it out without breaking it? That's the question. Don't break it. Don't break it. Oh, hold that up. Look at that. It's a pretty nice one. Beautiful. So one of our barrels is done, but wait until you see what we got out of this barrel. So look, I took that off of the one plant on the other side. And as I move this out of the way, ignore those ones that got broke off. But look, still more. So it is so good to get these off. And in a second, I'm going to show you. There are so many green ones still on these vines or plants. So hopefully we can figure out a way to cover them to make them last just that little bit longer. All right, so that's what I've got so far for the peppers. Next, you can see I'm standing underneath our yellow bean trellis. I'm going to pick some of the beans and get them out of here. And then we're even going to pick some of the dried ones before they get wet in Sunday's rain. Intruder alert, intruder alert. These young chicks have gone through the fence, but at this time of the year, we really don't care. They're in here getting whatever the last of the bugs are, eating that dead stuff. It's perfect. It's like Jurassic Park. They just get lost and you just see the tops of the trees moving. So this is really one of the things that I love about these Necro Gold uh, beans. We've got another round coming late in the year. You can see just off to the side over here. My fingers are dirty. I apologize. We're harvesting away. There are beans, beans all over this trellis. So let's see what we can pick. I really don't need more in the freezer, but I would like to have some for fresh eating. And they do store for quite a while if I put them in a Ziploc bag in the fridge. So let's see what we can pick off of this before we get a frost again. So I had to taste test one. This one I'd picked and I thought, oh, it's going to be woody on the outside because it's getting a little too big. And I had to share. It's unbelievable and it's so sweet. So sweet. So late season... I have to say, I like them almost better than the early season. Who knew? Anyways, back to work. Now, behind me here, you can see our in-ground pepper patch. There is, I believe it is 42 peppers here, pepper plants. And we did sneak out by headlamp and flashlight the last night to collect what we could kind of 
sea was ripe out here because we were thinking it is going to get too cold. We also did sneak out and harvest some stevia as well because that's something that's essential and it can't take the cold either. So we picked at least another bucket just to make sure we had it. But one thing I want to show you about these peppers, even though there isn't really much on here for me to harvest right now, they are covered in gorgeous green peppers. Now, frost last night, it's only going to be 10 degrees tonight. So it, it Celsius. So we have no frost risk tonight. So I'm not worrying too much about getting these off of here because we did pick what was ripe, but I'm going to show you just how full these are of peppers still. And I really wish I could figure out a way to cover them. So you can see here, this was one plant, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it just keeps going. Look at those big ones right there and going and going and going right to that top they even still have blossoms on them and honestly as we look at another plant they're all like this just covered in peppers well our daylight is fading so the last thing i'm going to harvest here tonight is these lima beans not all of them obviously but i'm going to get what is ripe because we have some time tonight is not supposed to be a frost so we're going to come back tomorrow and keep going because one thing that we have to get out of the ground before the next threat of frost is our peanuts. I know it doesn't look like a lot there, but there are two nice rows of peanuts. I'll get in closer to the plants here so you can see. There it is. And you can see last night they did take a bit of a beating from the frost. So we're going to get these out tomorrow and see what's under them. Well, we're in the midst of our squash harvest, our winter squash, and it hasn't been a great year this year. We're getting some squash, but our Canada Crooknecks have very little or very little that we've been able to find yet. But these green striped Kershaw squash, this is the biggest one so far. And there's at least four or five more that we know of. I'm pretty sure there's more hidden in here. So at least one of our <laughs> varieties. squash varieties produced pretty well. That's got to be 20 pounds. It's heavy. Well guys, it's day number two of trying to get what needs to be harvested before another frost hits us. And you can see behind me, people are working hard at those black beans. We're trying to get them off there before those dried pods get all wet in the rain tomorrow. But as I mentioned yesterday, as we were closing out the harvest, it's time to do those peanuts. I'm super excited to see what's going to be under there. And as you just saw, our squash harvest a little on the disappointing side but we did get some real big ones, which hopefully will sustain us once we've got some room in the freezer to preserve those. Look at all the dried black beans. These are our Cherokee Trail of Tear black beans. We have been so happy with these over the last few years. And I think this year is going to be no different. These guys always deliver and they always deliver a lot. All right, so plant number one, you can see it's actually done pretty good so far. The problem with peanuts is they're a little finicky to get out. <laughs> so I'm going to be careful here because if I just pull the plant up, at least in our soil, I will lose a lot of a them. Lot and of then that peanuts. means a lot of digging. Yeah. So that's an awesome amount on that one plant though. And you do get some that come off. They're like little suckers, like what a potato, sweet potato would do or something. Well, the plant basically puts its flowers and then the flower pushes down into the soil and becomes the peanut. Lovely. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far on our first plant. I'm excited. Well, we are probably not even a third harvested from these rows that we have. You can see our little patch here that's already done. But here we have some of the peanuts that we've managed to get out of here so far. I'll be honest, we are quite impressed with the harvest for this year compared to uh, previous year. So well, previous year we had none, but the year before that we did grow them and it was good, but this one is better. Look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? They look just like store-bought peanuts. Hard at work. We're about to go see just how many black beans these guys have pulled off these vines. I've been hearing a lot of that sound. Well, it's looking pretty promising here, and we are not finished yet, that's for sure. Well, we're not done, but it is getting close, and look it, look it, look it. 
We've bundled them all up. This is how we do our peanuts. Then we leave them hanging upside down like this in the barn until they dry out enough to be roasted. This is an amazing harvest so far. Wow, guys, that is a wrap on a fantastic peanut harvest. Look at what I've got here. It's looking awesome. I'm so excited to dry and roast these, but that's something to come later because it's going to take a little while. But we've got to get them hung in the barn before we see the rain that's coming tonight. And I'm going to say it, that's probably a wrap on what we're going to harvest because everything else is pretty hardy and should be able to handle a bit of frost or I'm not too worried about it because I already have lots, like the tomatoes, for example. So I will give you a quick overview of what we've got in the house that we've harvested already. Still more dry beans to come. There's lots still to come out of this garden. And I'm going to end this video with a clip of some cherry tomatoes that are just booming out in the garden. So hopefully we can keep cooking with those for a little longer.